Spy Party is a two-player game. The spy is somewhere inside the party, having a delightful time socializing with the other guests, while also trying to accomplish their secret missions. The sniper is outside the party, and is pretty upset at not being invited to join in. We're going to practice sniper first, and so we're looking at the sniper view now. As sniper, you observe the guests closely to figure out which one is the spy, and then you have exactly one bullet with which to stop them before they accomplish their missions. I've given you movement control now. You can move around outside the level with the A and D keys and aim with the mouse. Now try zooming with the W and S keys, or with the mouse wheel. Next we're going to play a little practice game of Spy Party, except instead of doing subtle espionage missions, the spy in this game will be wearing a name tag on their lapel or dress. It probably goes without saying, the spy in a real game won't be wearing this helpful sticker. I'll put the name tag on the spy when you're ready. One of the guests is wearing the name tag, so look around the party for it. When you find that guest, hold the shift key to take the safety off and click the mouse button to shoot. That wasn't the spy. The spy in this practice game is wearing a name tag, so just take your time and look around until you find it. Look at the guests and shoot the one wearing the name tag. Left and right click highlight and low light guests, which we'll talk about in a minute. But to shoot, remember you have to hold the shift key to take the safety off and click the mouse button. That also wasn't the spy. The home office would like to remind you that these sniper bullets cost money. Also, shooting innocent people is not nice. Look at the guests and shoot the one wearing the name tag. You finally shot the spy. Congratulations. To celebrate, everybody gets resurrected. Next we're going to do a similar practice game, but this time we'll focus on low lighting. As sniper, you can manage your suspects during the game by highlighting and low lighting the guests, marking them more and less suspicious for your own bookkeeping. The party always has a number of cast members attending. These are people with different jobs, like the waiter, the security guard, the suspected double agents, and the ambassador, and they all have triangles over their heads so they're easy to spot. No one in the cast can ever be the spy. So a useful strategy for beginners is to low light the cast at the beginning of the party. Let's practice this when you're ready to start. Low light the cast members since they can't be the spy. They are marked with triangles over their heads. You low light using the right mouse button. Nice. Four more casts to low light. That cast you just low lit wasn't in the cast. You might want to undo the low light if it was an error. Use the left mouse button to bring them back up to neutral. Good. Three more cast members to go. Almost there. Two more cast low lights left. Only one more cast member to low light. That guest you just low lit wasn't in the cast. You might want to undo the low light if it was an error. Use the left. That guest you just low lit wasn't in the cast. You might want to undo the low light if it was an error. Use the left mouse button to bring them back up to neutral. Great. Now you've low lit all the cast members. Notice how the low lights blend into the background and you can see the other guests more clearly? The low lit guests are also moved to the right on the row of portraits at the bottom of the screen. Now let's practice highlighting. Like low lighting, you can use highlighting to help manage your suspects. For this practice game, let's assume we've decided any guest who is not in the cast but is holding a drink is suspicious and we want to keep track of them. Highlight three different guests who are not... Yes, while the waiter is indeed holding drinks, I'm guessing you know that's not what I meant. Great. Two more drink-holding guests. That guest is in the cast and can't be the spy, so we're not going to count them as suspicious, even if they're holding a drink. You might want to undo that highlight so you don't lose track of your real suspects. That guest is in the cast and can't be the spy, so we're not going to count them as suspicious, even if they're holding a drink. You might want to undo that highlight so you don't lose track of your real suspects. Only one more guest to highlight.
Perfect. See how the highlight guests stand out from the others and how they're moved to the left in the portraits at the bottom of the screen? Oh, also, don't worry, the spy can't see your highlights or lowlights. Those are the basic mechanics of sniper play. To look at the missions themselves, we'll learn how to play spy. Before we start, pick which character you want to be for the spy tutorial. When you're the spy, you're trying to blend into the party, but also accomplish missions while not getting shot. You've already seen the sniper view, so while you're practicing these spy actions, keep in mind what they'll look like when you're playing the sniper, too. Try moving around now with the W, A, S, and D keys. The cursor keys also work. The mouse moves the camera and helps you steer while moving. Get a feel for walking around the party, check out how the other guests move, and try to blend in with them. Notice the outline pads on the floor? There are floor pads for conversations, statues, windows, and other active areas. Whenever you're standing still, you need to be standing on one of these pads or else you'll look suspicious to an observant sniper. Try Remember, don't stop in the middle of the room. Usually guests will only stop on the outline floor pads. Good. Always remember to look around and choose your destination floor pad before you start moving, and walk straight to it without stopping to avoid arousing the sniper's suspicion. We'll stay on this pad for the next couple of exercises. Another important thing spies need to learn is good camera management. You want to always have the party in view regardless of where you're standing. You can swing your view all the way around, and the walls will even disappear to get out of your way. Try spinning the camera in a full circle to look around at the entire party. Depending on where you're standing, the spy will have different actions available, and often there will be multiple actions available simultaneously, so you need to be able to scroll through them to get to the one you want. You can see an example now towards the bottom of the screen. Anytime those white arrows are visible on the sides of the action box, it means there are multiple available actions. Because picking one's nose isn't very spy-like, scroll to the check watch action and trigger it. You scroll through the actions with the mouse wheel or the Q and E keys and trigger them with the mouse button. You didn't really think I implemented a pick nose action in animation, did you? This is just a tutorial for scrolling through multiple actions. So scroll to check watch with the mouse wheel or the Q and E keys and fire it with the mouse button. Okay, now you've got the basics of spy control. Let's learn some missions. Now we're gonna practice the swap statue mission. Your goal as spy is to swap out one of the priceless statues for a fake. Move around and use your camera controls to find the statue floor pad I've highlighted for you and go stand on it. Good. I've turned on the interface at the bottom of the screen that shows your available actions. Try picking up the statue. Now that you're holding a statue, notice which shape it is. There are three different types of statues in the game. You might need to swing your camera around to see them all. And note, you can swing the camera into the walls and they will disappear, giving you a better view of the party. Now you've got a spy action available. Keep an eye on your statue and swap it to complete the mission. You put down the statue. Did you mean to? The spy actions and the normal actions are separate, so you can choose which one to do based on your system. Now you've got a spy action available. Keep an eye on your statue and swap it to complete the mission. Did you notice the statue changed shape? When you're sniper, you'll need to look for that change to find the spy, but you won't get the benefit of the color changing, just the shape. You've checked off this mission, so put the statue back and walk out into the party. That's it for the swap statue mission. Remember, the spy is trying to swap out one of the statues, and the sniper is trying to notice when a statue has been swapped and figure out which guest did it. Next up, we'll practice contacting the double agent. To accomplish this mission, the spy needs to say a secret code phrase to the double agent in a conversation. Swing the camera around until you find the double agent. They've got a yellow triangle over their head now. Here's the view in your sniper. If you move around and look closely, you can see multiple suspected double agents sporting yellow triangles. One of them is the real double agent. You have to be in a conversation circle with the double agent to say the secret phrase. The secret phrase is banana bread, because I was eating some when I wrote the code for this mission. Banana bread is tasty. The double agent isn't in a conversation right now, so normally you'd have to wait or do other missions until they felt like talking. But to move things along, and since I like you, I'll send them to a conversation now. Conversations have a flow you'll learn as you observe the other guests and play the game more. I've turned on the actions for conversations and for contacting the double agent. Try contacting the double agent using the spy action.
Banana bread. Good. Did you hear the banana bread? Now you've contacted the double agent and accomplished the mission. I paused the game so I can show you how many low lights the sniper could have potentially gotten from your contact. Look around and see how many low lights the sniper might have gotten from your banana bread. These were the guests outside of conversations when you contacted. Always be aware of who is in conversation when you contact the double agent. Here's what those low lights look like from the sniper's view. That's it for the contact the double agent mission. It's usually hard for the snipers to definitively shoot for banana bread, but it often allows them to narrow down their suspects a lot, so spies need to be careful out there. This time we'll practice bugging the ambassador. If you look around the party, you'll see the ambassador has a purple triangle over their head. You bug the ambassador by standing close to them and sticking your arm out to plant the bug. That arm sticking out part can be pretty obvious to the sniper unless you're careful, so a lot of people get shot trying to bug. I've enabled the bugging action, so get close to the ambassador and give it a try. Nice work. You successfully planted the bug and completed the mission. Now we're going to learn how to flirt and seduce a guest. Your seduction target has a red triangle over their head. Can you find them in the party? By the way, the sniper doesn't get to know which guest is the seduction target. To flirt, you have to be in a conversation with the target, or be pretty close to them at a window or statue or other location where guests congregate. The closer you are to the target, the more you seduce them with each flirt. It usually takes three or four flirts to complete the mission, but for this tutorial, I'm going to start you at 50%, as you can see in the upper left corner. You can't come on too strong, so you have to wait between each flirt, but if you move away, you don't have to wait as long. In a normal game, you'd do other missions during these breaks. The seduction action is now enabled. Move in close and start flirting to seduce the target. Good. You can see the progress bar and the mission in the upper left is increased. You need to fill that bar to complete the seduction. The upper part of the progress bar counts down until the target is ready to be seduced again. It counts down faster the more space you give them, so it's best to move away for a while. Okay, the countdown is up, and now the seduction target is ready for another flirt. Remember, the closer you are, the more your flirts fill the progress bar. Great, you successfully seduced the target. Now we need to talk about time. The spy is on a timer, and if you don't finish your missions before the time runs out, the sniper wins. You can see I've turned on the timer display in the upper right corner of the screen. The timer puts pressure on the spy to accomplish missions. However, the spy does have a way of increasing the available time while in the game. Of course, there's a risk the sniper will catch the spy adding time. Adding time isn't really a mission, but it's still an important tactic for spies to learn for snipers to catch, so let's practice it now. You add time by going to a window pad and checking your watch. There's a normal version of checking your watch, which does not add time, and which the other guests will perform. And there's the spy action, which adds 45 seconds to the clock. I've turned on both the normal and the spy actions for checking your watch at the window now, so go add good. If this was a real game, you would have given yourself some extra time to complete your missions, assuming the sniper didn't see the timer go up while you were checking your watch at the window, of course. Let's put the first four missions together and play with a real time limit so you can learn about pacing. I've enabled the swap. I'm setting the clock to four minutes. Try to do your missions in that time. But remember, you can add more time at the windows. I've also turned on the sniper's laser sight, so be careful about acting suspicious when the sniper's looking your way. Complete the four enabled missions on the left before the timer runs out, and good luck. Remember, when you see multiple available actions like this, you can scroll through them with the mouse wheel or the Q and E keys. Have you noticed the sniper's laser sight following you around? Always keep an eye on the laser sight so you know when to play it cool. The double agent's in a conversation now, in case you were waiting for that. You've got four missions to accomplish. Better get moving. Banana bread. A fake contact because the double agent wasn't in your conversation. This can mislead the sniper, but it gives them a lot of information, so use it cautiously. Banana bread.
Banana bread. Okay, you said banana bread and contacted the double agent. Let's see how many lowlights the sniper could have gotten if they were on top of things. Not bad. Most guests were in conversations, but always be aware where the guests are when you contact the double agent. Excellent. One mission down. Remember, it's incredibly important to not stop in the middle of nowhere. You have to stop on the floor pads like the other guests do, or you will get shot. Nice, you flirted. Now go work on some other missions while the seduction timer counts down. The seduction timer has run out, so you can flirt again if you want. Be more careful about stopping only on the floor pads. <laughs> You've got half your missions done. Or you only stop on the floor pads if you want to avoid bullets. Banana bread. Almost done. One more mission to go. Be careful, the timer's running out. Maybe go add some time at the windows or rush to finish if you think you can make it. The double agent's in a conversation now, in case you were waiting for that. Banana bread. Banana bread. You accomplished all the missions, now just play it cool until you win. The sniper doesn't get to see this countdown timer. It's just there so the spy can't rush the last mission and win instantly. Congratulations, you're ready to play spy. You can Let's practice the individual missions from the sniper's side. We'll go through each mission, one at a time, trying to either spot the spy and shoot them, 